Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Stories of Yonko. Finally back here with another video. And I know some of you guys have been wondering where have I been? Why haven't I been uploading? You guys subbed to me and I appreciate that. You guys stuck with me. I pretty much just been going through personal problems. Like, I haven't been in the right frame of mind to upload videos. Like, I like being in my bag. I like being in the thoughts of enjoying the sport, enjoying the game. You know, I can be in that frame of mind I could talk very passionately about the game and talk about the things that I care about when that's what I can focus on. But I start school next month and I still got a lot of personal things going on that it's out of my hands. And, you know, sometimes life comes at you fast and you get punched in the mouth, but you got to take it on the chin, even though you just got punched in the mouth. That's life, you know, and you just got to power through it. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm uploading this video these other videos just to try to power through it because we set out to achieve a goal on this channel to be the alternative to the alternative and just to speak truth against the new media and the current media that's what i'm achieving that's what i'm trying to achieve and i can't do that without you guys and i appreciate you guys for subbing up making my channel grow faster so you know it's all love over here and i'm gonna power through it uh, keep uploading as long as I'm able to and let's get into the video. All right Jason Tatum and the Boston Celtics I have had this question Since they acquired Drew Holiday and Chris as Porzingis This is a super team Now I know a lot of you guys gave me pushback when I made that original video Talking about keeping the same energy for these other super teams as I did for the Brooklyn Nets as I did for LeBron James. You know? This team is a super team. I had them as the favorites to come out of the Eastern Conference. This is before they start dominating everybody. As you see, they are a juggernaut. If you did not predict this team would run through the East, you're crazy. They are comfortably the first seed in the East. They just lost their 10-game winning streak. They go on these runs like it's nothing. They don't even talk about it because people are supposed, they're supposed to expect it now. This team is the best team in the league. So how much credit would a player like Jason Tatum get as far as his legacy, as far as where he ranks amongst the all-time greats and the current greats that are still playing? How much credit and where will we rank Jason Tatum if he won with this team? Me personally... I would not give him much credit. Now, I know Boston fans are going to be upset at that because I've already said Jason Tatum is not a superstar. He does not meet the criteria of a superstar. And even if he won a ring, Finals MVP, which is the bare minimum to get into that conversation, did he really lead his team there? Or was his team just that much better than the competition in the East or in the West? Like, that's my conversation that I want to start bringing up around Jason Tatum. I don't hate Jason Tatum. I like the guy since he came into the league. You feel me? But I've seen him throughout his entire career. The dude comes up small, but basically he gives he gets a pass. And people come down on Jalen Brown. They came down on Marcus Smart. They came down on everybody but him. Now, if you're from the black community... You kind of know why that is, why they go at, you know, Jalen Brown and they give Jason Tatum a pass. You know, certain people of a certain complexion in our community tend to be treated better than others. Not saying that it's right, but it happens. And you're talking about media. You're talking about regular fans. It's subconscious that they treat a person of darker skin worse than somebody of lighter skin and that's all i'm gonna say about that but listen jason tatum good player not a great player we saw him in the finals we saw him multiple times in the playoffs coming up small and somehow we're expecting this guy to win the mvp kendrick perkins oh the best player on the best team uh no duh like literally i don't know if it was boston tax or just the simple fact that his teammates were that talented that when 
Julius Randle and Joel Embiid went down, they were talking about replacements. They had the winning record for Derek White. And then they had Chris Stapps Porzingis stats. That's Boston tax. But those guys are also talented. I had to hear Reggie Miller push the Derek White agenda. All-star. He should be all-star. I don't know why Derek White is not going to be an all-star. I would be surprised if he's not an all-star. I had to hear that. I was tired of it. I was going to pull up the TD Garden and, and get at Reggie for it. Like, what are we doing here? He's not an all-star. But, thankfully, Trey Young and Scotty Barnes got in. Uh, Listen, when you have people talking about your teammates like that, and Drew Holiday being a former all-star, Drew Holiday is shooting, what, 66, 64% in the corner. In the corner. You have a former all-star. You have a guy playing the best basketball of his career in Chris S. Porzingis. You got another all-star in Jalen Brown. And you got an all-star in yourself. You have an elite role player in Derek White. Like, dude, you got Al Horford coming off the bench. You just got Xavier Tillman. Like, Peyton Pritchard, you know, same level as Austin Reeves. I don't care. Fight me. But um, listen, this team is stacked. And they're a good team. Shout out to Brad Stevens. But my question is, how much credit do we give Jason Tatum if he wins with this team? You came up small against a undermanned. When I be my undermanned, it's like that Golden State Warriors team in 2022 was not, was not supposed to beat the Celtics. I don't know how they did it, but you know what? A real superstar went up against a fake superstar. And it showed. Jalen Brown stepped up, but people still shitting on him because he can't go left. Dude, this team is stacked. It's stacked. This is better than any team LeBron has ever had. If you want to say it's on the same level, just because they don't have the same record as far as the Warriors back in, what, 2016. Listen, the Warriors were ahead of their time. The Warriors were shooting threes and the league had not yet transformed into a three-point shooting league at that time. They never repeated that record before, you know, or after. So, you know, it was just part of the time. They were ahead of the curb and then now you got a bunch of teams shooting threes and nobody is winning 70 <laughs> games ever again. Like, I promise you, it's not ever going to happen. 60 games, the Celtics are on pace to... Get 60 games. Like, these dudes are playing amazing basketball, but I don't want the discourse to be around Jason Tatum that, oh, he's carrying his team and, oh, he's sacrificing his game for this. Dude, so many shots got to go around. And Jason Tatum can play like trash. We've seen it. And his team still win against elite teams. He can go scoreless for the entire first half. And his team could still get the dub. We saw it in the playoffs. He was going scoreless in the first quarter. Multiple times in that Philly series. And somehow, some way, they still won the series. Like, dude, Jason Tatum, if you remove him off this team and insert someone like a LeBron, I promise you, it's seamless. Insert a KD, seamless. Curry, seamless. Kyrie, seamless. Luka, seamless. He has no impact on this team winning that no other player could not do the same thing that he does. Sure, their games might be different, but I promise you, I promise you, Jason Tatum has shown that his impact is not that great with this team. He's impactful to a degree. But Jason Tatum, dude, I don't know if we can give this guy that much credit if he wins a ring with this team. I, I, I'm i not going to lie. I got a little bit more respect for the bubble ring and Giannis ring more than this. You know, I'm just being real. The team is too damn good. It's too good. And I'm not mad at Brad Stevens. And I'm not necessarily even mad at Jason Tatum. But this is no longer an organic team. It's not. Derek White wasn't drafted there. Like, Chris Desborsingas was not drafted there. Drew Holiday wasn't drafted there. 
Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown were. They got rid of Marcus Smart. Their core has changed. So it's like we can't sit up here and act like this is an organic team. It's not. This team was built to trample over the competition. And it's doing that. So I don't want to hear about Jason Tatum being the MVP. People had Jokic, SGA, and Joel B before he got hurt. Luka. I don't even know how Jason Tatum got over Luka. But whatever. They're pushing the narrative that he should be the MVP. Boston Tax, once again, whatever. But the reason why Giannis is not at the top, even though he's putting up like pretty much the best stats of his career. Like, dude, he's shooting good from three. You know, he's still doing what he do at the line. And he's shooting 60%. Like, the guy, you know, he's going crazy. But he's next to Damian Lillard. And the Bucks are... I would consider the Bucks a super team or a very low-level super team just based on the fact that you have the projection of these guys before the season started that they were the runaway champions they didn't talk about denver they didn't talk about all these other teams they said the bucks got it and even after the celtics made the acquisition for chris as porzingis and drew holiday they said this team was just the best team in the east and they were going to win everything so boom super team and <laughs> yeah um the issue is that Joel Embiid's second best player was Tyrese Maxey. Tyrese Maxey, he became an all-star this season. But he's like a low-level star. He's not really a household name. He's not proven or anything like that. He's just a star. And Jokic, his second best player, Jamal Murray, he's never made an all-star team. But we know what he does in the playoffs, but still, he has not had the stats to compete with the other elite guards in his conference to make an all-star team. I know people say, oh, he deserves this, he deserves that. Dude, the West has been stacked for decades. If he can't put up 25, he's not going to make it. He had a good chance if he could put up that, but he's never put up 25 in his career. And then you have SGA, the second best player on that team is J-Dub or Chet. It's a toss-up. I would take J-Dub. But who is the second best player on the Celtics? Jalen Brown. Who is the third best player on that team? Chris Das Porzingis. Or you could take Chris Das Porzingis over Jalen Brown. But guess what? It's a real discussion. These guys are averaging 20-plus. You feel me? Then you got Derek White. 60 points. Then you... That's like, dude. Like, <laughs> the entire starting lineup, double digits. And you guys are making it seem like Jason Tatum should be the MVP. Why? Why? He he literally has a super team. Nobody is talking about Kawhi being the MVP. Nobody's talking about that. Nobody is talking about that because it's understood that he has too much talent on his team. You know, some people will say this and say that, but no media is truly having Kawhi as a top contender for the MVP. He's played most of the season, but guess what? He has a super team. So we got to hold Jason Tatum to that same standard. And it's just, it's ridiculous. Boston tax. But Jason Tatum, if he wins the ring, I can't give him as much credit as I would give someone like a Giannis, a Luka, even a LeBron, KD, because dude, we saw you when it mattered the most and you couldn't get it done without a super team. So if you get it done with a super team, um yeah <laughs> you feel me like like dude you can't just come up small and then come back with a juggernaut team and just trample over the competition or win you like you literally need this much help this is what they talk about lebron and kd how much help do they need how much help does jason tatum need, need to compete because it's still jokes out there saying, oh, the Celtics are lucky that Jason Tatum is their best player. Like, because, man, if they had someone like LeBron, KD, Steph, then it would surely be a runaway finals appearance or a runaway championship. You feel me? That's the jokes that they put on Jason Tatum because he's shown that he's not that guy. It don't matter if he wins a championship now. He has shown you. With a good team, an elite team, he cannot perform and he cannot win. 
So if you give him a super team and guys compensate for his deficiencies that much to the point that he would still get the finals MVP and he would still win a championship. He would meet the criteria to become a superstar, but he would be the lowest, the absolute lowest tier of superstar on my list. Because the minimum requirement is a finals MVP and leading, quote unquote, leading your team to an NBA championship. But is he really leading? Is he really leading or is he just part of that team? He's more part of that team than quote unquote leading because they really don't need him to be an elite team. If Jason Tatum, God forbid, went down with injury, the Celtics would still be a top three seed. You feel me? Even if you take away the amount of lead that they have on the first seed, right? They would not fall into the play-in. They would be a legit playoff team, a top seed, top four, top three seed. That's how good they are with or without him. So listen, man. I don't want to make Boston fans and Jason Tatum stands upset, but he's not a superstar and he's come up small for most of his career. He's literally a light skin, taller uh, Damian Lillard with better defense and uh, in the Eastern Conference. And I just don't I don't get it. Of course, he's one of these players that is supposed to be an ambassador for the league for years to come. And I guess that's the reason why they don't criticize him as much. But I've seen John Moran get criticized. I've seen Shea get criticized. I've seen other players get criticized for not coming up big. You know, they criticize Luka. You know, but Jason Tatum gets no criticism. But if he loses with this team, they are on his ass. And I will be on his ass. Pause. So he would deserve all the criticism. Because even though what he did in the finals... You know, people talked about it. It wasn't something that people are just going to keep bringing up or something like how they do with LeBron James in 2011 against the Mavericks. People always bring that up. You know, people always bring up 2014. You know, people always bring up just what happened to him. And rightfully so. But if Jason Tatum loses with this team, if he don't even make it to the finals, dude, he's completely i don't care what they do to the roster i don't care what happens he is no longer eligible to be the best player in the nba or to be a superstar he is no longer eligible if he loses with this team if he wins with this team cool fine banner 18 whatever but my issue is you guys are not going to rank him over other guys that have proven like literally if you replace Kyrie Irving <laughs> like if you put Kyrie Irving on that 2022 team and take Jason Tatum out in the finals against Steph Curry come on now they win easily they win no doubt about it they win bro you know how Kyrie go against Steph you know you replace <laughs> like him with KD they win because KD went up against that team but KD wasn't on that team. You put, like, any other player in the league on that team. Hell, I, I say you put John Moran on that team, they still win. And I'm not saying that Jason Tatum is not a good player, but it's just the simple fact that this guy has pretty much been spoiled his entire career. He's never had to go through the grind. And I'm not one of these guys who carry culture. You have to carry the worst team possible. But when you have a good team, you have no excuse not to win with that team. People gave Kyrie so much hell, which I'm linking a video on that. But people gave Kyrie so much hell losing to the MVP in the second round in Boston. A team that was better than that Celtics team. It doesn't matter if they made it to the conference finals a year before. They were a better team. The Milwaukee Bucks were a better team the following year. And the Celtics lost to the better team. People act like the niggas lost to the Detroit Pistons. They didn't. So, yeah. Jason Tatum, I'm praying for success. I hope you get it done. I hope that you don't waste this talent that's around you. I hope that you finally get over that hump and you finally get some respect on your name. But the issue is, amongst all-time greats, I say I have more respect. For, I'm not going to say that. You feel me? Put it like this. His rings are going to be the same quality of KD's rings. 
plain and simple. You feel me? We we're not gonna criticize Kevin Durant and then we say, oh well, Jason Tatum, you know, he got this done. Dude, it doesn't matter if it's the team that drafted him. The team is no longer organic, and he had to do all of this after coming up small many times. So that's all I gotta say. Let me know what y'all think. Boston Celtics fans, don't get in y'all feelings. Peace.